how we doing this morning? Yeah, you guys still waking up. Well, that's all good. You guys want to stand up with us and uh, let's get into some worship. Let's get have some have a good time here. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just jump right into this here. Let's clap our hands there. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash, I am born and gained. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are more than the words can say. I follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Ever free in an ending grace. Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love and Shining light, you break the chains that are holding me. You set your sun down to set me free. And everything in this world will fade. Pressing on until I see your face. I will live that you will be done. I won't stop till your kingdom comes. Come on, cause you are, you are, you are my freedom. We live you higher, your love, your love, your love, your love. It's 
Father, it's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And you're a good, good Father.
Let's sing it one more time. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will.
that? Let's lift our hands this morning, church. that word overwhelming just keeps going over and over on the inside as, as you all were singing that and then as I step, stepped up here just that that word just keeps jumping out overwhelming the love of God is overwhelming you know when I think of the word the word the word the word overwhelm You know, it's something that just so out, you know, it, it, it outdoes everything else, right? I mean, when you're overwhelmed by something or when someone does something for you that's so just, you know, it's overwhelming, it so far exceeds any expectation that you may have had. It exceeds everything else. The love of God is just that for us. It's overwhelming. It puts us at ease. It does what nothing else can do. It releases the weight. It releases the burden. provides the things that we need. His love is overwhelming. And I, I trust that you can just sense that this morning, that you can sense the presence. You know, we, we talked last week about the helper and we talked about the Holy Spirit. And I just, I, I trust that you can sense that tangible difference this morning from when you walked in. thank you this morning for your overwhelming love. Lord, I thank you that no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what we face, no matter what we're up against, your love is overwhelming toward us. words to that song said I didn't earn it and I don't deserve it but you still pour it out on me every single day Father I 
I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for your tangible presence being here today. Lord, I thank you that those that are watching online can sense it in their own home, in their car, at work, wherever they may be. I thank you that they can feel it right where they're at. Father, I thank you for your presence being here to speak to us, minister to us today. today. I thank you that things are shifting for our good. Lord, we thank you for that today. Thank you for this opportunity to be here, to be together, to gather in your name. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. seated. I want to say thanks for connecting with the, the worship team this morning. You know, as they were leading us, you could just, you can feel the connectivity. Um, and so I, I so appreciate that. And I know they do as well, because that, that makes their role a whole lot easier as well. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, we're going to go ahead with our giving this morning again. Um, we're just encouraging everyone um, to do that online. You can do it by mail as well. Um, I know that for those that are here and you want to do it in person, uh, there's an offering uh, receptacle out in the lobby at Rock Central. So you can drop that in there if you'd like. If you're wanting to give in person, that's totally fine as well. If you're giving via text, you're going to text that to 84321. And uh, if you're going online, you can go to rockfamilychurch.net click on the give link there to be able to do that. Once again, thank you all so much for your, your generosity. Uh, thank you for just continuing to be a, a, a conduit for God to work through you. Um, you know, during this season that we've been in, in 2020, um, as I've talked with other pastors, most churches have actually seen an increase in their giving during this time. Um, and that's been true for us as well. And so I just appreciate, you know, your generosity. Uh, I appreciate your heart. Um, and I just appreciate your faithfulness. Uh, you know, our, our missionaries are very grateful for the extra that we've been able to send them each month. I actually just got a message the other day from our missionaries in Uganda saying thank you for the extra. Um, got to talk to our missionaries down in the South Pacific, in the Samoan Islands, and spreading out into Fiji and Vanuatu. And, you know, they were very appreciative as well and said thanks for the extra and just helping them to do what God's called them to do. So thank you for doing that. Um, we're going to pray over our offering as well. Um, and uh, you can give however it is that works best for you. So let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. God, we thank you that you are our provider. Lord, we thank you that you are our shepherd and we have no want. We have no need because you take such good care of us. And so, Father, I thank you that we have the opportunity today to bring our tithes and offerings to you. Father, we do that because we want to be a part of what you're doing. We do that because we love just seeing you move and work in people's lives. And we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of seeing people's lives impacted for the kingdom. So, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to give into that. Father, I thank you that as we are obedient with what you put in our hearts to do, that you see to it that our, our needs are met. Father, you see that our families are taken care of. And Lord, not only that, but you see to it that we have extra that we can be a blessing to others. That's what we want to do. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you again for just being so generous and faithful. I um, want to mention that Father's Day is coming up. Um, so you want to be here uh, for that actually next Sunday. And uh, so we'll be honoring all the dads, and so um, excited to uh, just be able to do that. So make sure you're here on, on Father's Day next week. Um, if you know a dad that is not attending church anywhere else, I encourage you to bring them with you next Sunday, and uh, let us honor them um, as well. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you, Miss Deb. Appreciate it. Um, so... Today, if you're taking notes and you want a title um, for the message, last week again was the helper, and we talked about the, uh, the helper being the Holy Spirit and how Jesus sent us 
a helper um, to help us in life. And so um, today, the title, again, if you're taking notes and you want to jot this down or you're taking notes on a device, you can put this in there. Um, but today, I, I just have two words again, and it's the healing. The healing. Um, and so I want to start in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. And uh, I, I want to talk about the healing. Um, you know, I, it's no um, hidden thing that we are up against a lot of evil right now op in operation in our world. And, uh, you know, what we need right now is we need, we need a healing to take place. And uh, so I want to talk about that today. And so in John chapter 13, again, verses 34 and 35, it says, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You know, I, I know I shared that scripture recently. And I think one of the greatest things that we as the church can do to help bring about healing, to help initiate healing, um, not only in, in our country, but in the world, is to love others the same way that Jesus loved us. You know, obviously he sums it up there by saying, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Um, there's a lot of people needing love right now. And that includes us too. There's a lot of love that needs to go around, and I'm talking obviously about the God kind of love. Um, because really, the things that we're up against can only be solved in one particular way. Um, and part of that starts by loving others. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, says this. It says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Again, I, I know that the things that have been so prevalent that we're seeing happening would be totally different if we just followed what these scriptures say, if we really loved others. We didn't pretend to do it, but we really loved them. If we hated what is wrong and we held tightly to what is good. You know, the New King James Version ends that. Well, you know, I was reading in the New Living Translation, and it said, take delight in honoring each other. The New King James Version says, giving preference to one another. And the Passion Translation reads it this way, let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another. And I like how it said, and it goes on to say this, try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. You know, when we do that, you know what we do? We snuff out the plans of the enemy. We snuff out what we're seeing. We snuff out the hatred. We snuff out the division. We snuff out the evil. We snuff out the plan that the enemy has for our world. And we do that when we walk in the love that God has. We go on in Romans chapter 12, verses 14, starting in verses 14, verse 14. It says this, it says, Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. And again, when I read that in the Passion Translation, I see this. It says, live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be as mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Don't be smug or even think for a moment that you know it all. Never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. And it says this at the end, do your best to live as everybody's friend. Now, I know, again, right now, it's like we look at that and go, man, that ain't possible. Right? I mean, can we just be real? I mean, there's so much going on, again, that could be so overwhelming negatively that we need the overwhelming love of God in operation in our lives, in our families, in our community, in our state, in our country, in this world right now. We need that love 
that only God can give. 1 Corinthians 13, known as the love chapter. Verse 13 says this, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I like how the Passion Translation reads that one as well, and that'll be, we'll put that one up on the screen for you. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, Until then, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. You know, I, I wore my t-shirt today that I got years ago when we went to a, a youth event, um, and it simply says that, Darkness will never extinguish light. See, when we represent the love of God, when that exudes from us, when that comes out of us in everything that we do, that extinguishes darkness. You know, I, I know I've used this illustration before, but if you've ever been in a, on a cave tour, remember my caverns, you know, um, Oh, I just blanked. The, the, the cave, uh, Marble Cave at Silver Dollar City. Um, you know, they typically always have that point in the tour once you're in there that they turn off all the lights, right? And you cannot, your eyes don't adjust, right? Why? Because there's no source of light anywhere in the room for your eyes to adjust. But I remember as a kid when we went through the cave for the first time and the tour guide just pulled out a lighter out of their pocket and flipped on that lighter. It was like all of a sudden the room began to take shape and you could see it. Why? Because that little bit of light overpowered every bit of darkness that was in that room. That's you and I in our world. You and I are called to be that light to our world. And when we as the church, when we step up and we shine that light and we spread and we share and we love the way God loved us, what are we doing? We're snuffing out that darkness that we're seeing so prevalent in our world right now. You know, God wants us, uh, you know, we've read a few scriptures on love. There are lots more, a ton more. But God wants us to do what he wants us to love people. Why? Because he created us. Genesis 2, 7 says this, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. God created. Well, here's what I find interesting. When you read through Genesis and you see how God created everything that he created, what's interesting is that he spoke everything into existence, right? He spoke light into existence. He spoke waters. He spoke vegetation. He, he spoke everything into existence. The one thing that he took time and effort into creating and didn't just speak it into existence, was mankind. And it says he formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. And then it goes, we, we can read in Acts 17, and I know I use this scripture here recently as well, but it says, and from one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. God created us. And when we read in Genesis and we go back further than there in just chapter 2, we go into chapter 1, we see that God desired to create us in his image. So he created us to be like him. And he wants us to what? Represent or reflect his nature, which is what? Love. Another scripture that I've used a lot here recently is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Now, I want to read this one from a couple different translations as well. The Passion Translation reads this way. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. And the message translation reads it this way. This is no afternoon athletic contest 
that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. You want to know the root of all the stuff that we've been seeing going on in our world? It's the enemy. It's the devil. And he's working overtime to do what? To destroy. I mean, Jesus said, John 10, 10, right? I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. But prior to that, he said what? The enemy comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. What's he doing right now? Destroying a whole lot of stuff. Why? Because he understands. See, he sees into the same realm that God does. He sees into a spiritual realm. And he understands that the time of life on this earth is coming to a close. And he understands that there's going to be a return. And he understands that when Jesus does return, he's coming back for his bride, which the scripture says is the church. But the enemy also knows that the bride needs to be prepared and ready for that day. And so if he can wreak havoc and keep people from getting ready, then he keeps people from walking into that relationship eternally. And that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to divide and conquer. So what does the scriptures have to say? Again, you know, we're, if we're not up against flesh and blood, if we're not fighting human beings, if it, again, you know, this is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. So what are we supposed to do? Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. The New King James Version says, will forgive their sin and heal their land. The message says, restore their land to health. The Amplified says, pray and seek, crave, require as necessity my face. So what brings about the change? The church. The church can bring change. How do we do that? We gotta get on our faces. See, we're not in a physical battle here. I, I know it manifests itself, it comes out. Okay, there's a spiritual root here that comes out in a very natural way. And that natural way is what we're seeing played out. How do you attack? A root that you cannot see physically, you have to attack it in prayer. You have to go after it in prayer. James 5, 16 says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The Passion Translation reads this way, for tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. The Amplified says this, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. See, we've lacked the understanding of the power that is in our prayers. We've lacked the understanding of when I pray and I pray according to scripture and I get on my face, things begin to change. Because see, here's the thing, we've gotten so distant from the things of God that again, we just go about our life and you know, we It's like, you know, when we read in scripture and Paul says, you know, there's things that I want to do, but I just don't do it. Like, I, I keep getting tripped up. There's things that I don't want to do, and I do them. There's things that I want to do, and I don't do it. See, we want a relationship with God. We want to spend time with God, but we just get so caught up in life and busyness that we've strayed away from that. And here's the thing. When we get back to that, when we get back to just that repentance and that, you know, God, forgive me. I want to spend time with you. I want to know you. And we begin to pray for our community. And we begin to pray for our leadership. And we begin to pray for our country. And we begin to do things and attack things from a spiritual realm. Things begin to change. Things begin to shift. Again, the Amplified reads, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working. We need some dynamic power right now to change the things that we're seeing. We need the church 
to demonstrate that power. We need the church to step up to the plate and be who God has designed and created and called us to be. You know, there, um, th this last week, Kelly and I got to attend our RMAI conference. Um, and it was one of those conferences that, you know, because of everything going on, we didn't even know if we were going to get to host it. Uh, I'm a district director for our, our region, which is Missouri and Arkansas. And so we didn't even know if we were going to get to host it because of all the limitations on everything. And so we found out just a, a, a couple weeks out that we were going to be able to host it. Um, and, you know, so it was kind of a last minute thing, really, because normally you plan, you know, events like that in, in advance. And, um, you know, and it was, it was an incredible conference. It was, it was so good. And normally we take staff with us. And this year, again, with it being so late, noticed that when I finally found out we were going to have it and was able to notify them, it just didn't work out. Um, but we had a great turnout at the conference this year. And, you know, I, I went into the conference. There's something in, that I have been desiring, that I've been just really, you know, um, seeking God for. And, uh, you know, just wanting him to begin to move in our church in, very, in some very specific ways. And just saying, God, this is what I want to see. I want to see this specifically, and I want to see this specifically, and I want to see this specifically. And so at the conference, which is just Monday night and then all day Tuesday, um, so Tuesday night, the guest speaker, you know, he, he finished what he was um, sharing, and he said, you know, I really just feel like I'm supposed to pray for you all. And uh, so he had us all, you know, that wanted to come up, and he, you know, began to pray for folks, and, you know, he just would impart things to everyone or, you know, lay his hands on them and pray for them. And so him and his wife went and prayed for everyone that was there. And when we, you know, we waited till towards the end and, you know, um, so we were one of the last folks. And so when, when you step up there, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, all right, God, is there anything left for me? You know, um, and, and here's the thing, there's, he's never, you know, you've never exhausted all of his ability or his resources. And so we, we go up there and he comes up to me and, and he put his hand right here on my head and he started to pray for me. And as he did that, like he took his hand off my head and I had my eyes closed and was just listening to what he was saying. Um, and he took his hand off my head and he took his, his finger and he kind of like started tapping me on the chest and he was like, and he started saying specifically what I've been desiring from God. He said, this is coming to your church. And he tapped me again on the chest and he said, this is coming to your church. This is coming to your church. And he read off the things that I have been asking God to start happening in our church. If we don't represent the power that God has to change things, we're no different than any other church. And we're not truly representing what God has available for us as his kids. Because this, this world, there's no guarantee that things are going to look better than what they do right now. And so we need the power of God in our life to change things. We need the power of God to work on our behalf. We need the power of God to work in and through our leadership. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says this, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Passion Translation reads this way, and pray for every political leader and representative so that we would be able to live tranquil, undisturbed lives as we worship the awe-inspiring God with pure hearts. Notice he says, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. I can honestly say I've not seen a whole lot of prayer happening for people right now. Right? We 
need to change our mode of operation, if you will. We need to change how we respond to things. We need to change how we respond to people. We need to change how we respond to leadership. You know, I, I'm just like everybody else. I don't always agree with the way leadership does stuff. But you know what scripture tells me to do? Pray for them. So here's what I want to do. We have just a few minutes left in this service. And I want to take those few minutes and we're going to pray and so what I would love to do is if we can play just some, some music um, in the system because I want everybody to have the opportunity and you can stay right where you're at you can stay seated if you want to stand up you can stand up if you want to kneel down at your chair you can kneel down at your chair if you want to come up here and kneel down you can come up here and kneel down um, but we're going to pray and you know, uh, we're going to pray for the leaders of our country. Um, and then we're going to just carry on from that. And I want you um, to take this opportunity and you just pray about what's been on your heart. You pray about what maybe some things that God's showing you or maybe some things that you're like, God, what is going on in this particular area of my life? You know, you pray about that, you know, and, and I, you know what? We've got little ones in here. That's okay. They're not a bothering or affecting anything. And here's the thing. They can be just as much a part of the prayer. Amen? Um, so if you want to gather as a family unit and pray together, go for it. If you want to pray individually, do that too. Um, but we're going to pray. And so um, we're going to get the music, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us started, and I'm going to start us by praying for the, uh, the leadership. Um, and we're going to pray for leadership here in our country, leadership in our state, and leadership in our community. And then, like I said, we're going to go on from there. Um, and just give you some time to pray. Um, so um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and again, you just, you talk to God after that, okay? And I know this might be really awkward. Some of you might be like, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. Um, and so here's what I encourage you to do. You know, when I'm finished praying, I encourage you, you just begin to thank God for the things that he's done in your life. You know, what do you have to be thankful for? Just start there. Just start thanking him for what he's doing. You know, this is a great time also for us as a church to just ask God to forgive us. It's a great time for repentance. It's a great time to just say, God, forgive me, you know, for doing my life on my own. Forgive me for not paying attention to you. Forgive me for not putting you first. Forgive me for not praying, you know, whatever it is, just kind of start with some of those things. And I promise you, you're going to find that just these few minutes that we have are going to go real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Father, we just thank you right now that your word tells us that we are called by your name and that if we will pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sins and restore our land. And Father, that's exactly what we want to see. We want to see restoration in our land. Father, we want to see healing in our land. We want to see forgiveness for sins in our land. We want to see restoration in our land. And so, Father, right now we are coming to you, as it says in your word in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. And to ask, we ask you to intercede on their behalf, and we give thanks for them. And so right now, Father, we want to lift up the leadership of this country. We pray for our president, President Donald Trump. Father, we pray for the Senate leaders, for Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell. We pray for the House of Representatives, for Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the other leaders that work with her. Father, we lift them up to you, and we ask you right now to give them wisdom. We ask you to give them godly wisdom on decisions to be made and things that need to be changed in our country. We ask you to begin to work in their lives to speak to them, to change directions where directions need to be changed. Father, we ask you to begin to melt their heart on topics that they need to be melted on. Father, I thank you for surrounding them with godly wisdom, surrounding them with people who hear from you in the night who would give them advice, who would give them wisdom, who would speak to them and say, don't go there, but go this way. Who would tell them, you're going about that all wrong, or who would tell them, you know what, that is the heart of God. You keep going on that. And so, Father, I thank you for ministering to them. I thank you for speaking to them. Lord, we may not agree with them, but that doesn't matter. You said in, our, in your word that we're to pray for them. And so we pray for them, Father. We get our hearts right, Lord. We put our hearts in submission to you, and we pray for them. And we thank you for them, Father. We thank you for their lives. We thank you that their life has meaning. We thank you that they were made in your image. And so, Father, I thank you that they are directing our nation in a wise manner according to your scripture. 
Father, we thank you for leadership here in our own state, for our own governor, Mike Parson. Father, we lift him up to you. And I thank you, Lord, for speaking to him. Same thing. I thank you for giving him wisdom, giving him godly understanding. I thank you that he is surrounded again with godly leadership that hear from you and speak into his life. And Father, I thank you for speaking to his heart and showing him the direction and the things that need to be done. And I thank you, Father, for using us to keep him lifted up in prayer. And Father, for our own mayor here in this town, Mayor Steve Myers. Lord, we lift him up to you as well. We pray for him. We thank you, Father, that you're giving him godly wisdom on how to lead our community. I thank you, Father, that there are people who are coming across his path that are divinely ordained by you to cross his path and speak life into him, to uh, lift his hands and keep them lifted up, to be able to uh, you know, help him out in the leadership of this community and things that need to be done that, you know, for the, the, uh, the progress that needs to be made, Father. And I just thank you so much that we have the ability, again, to be able to gather together today and pray for those individuals. Father, we pray for those that are protecting our country, Lord. We pray for the military. We pray for the National Guard. We pray for law enforcement officers, Father. We pray protection around them, Father. We plead the blood over them. We thank you, Father, for watching out for them today. I thank you, Lord, that they will be directed and guided by your spirit. Your hand is guiding them, and maybe they don't even know it. But I thank you, Father, that they are sensing those prayers going up today, that we are undergirding them today with strength with wisdom. I thank you that the plans of the enemy are being thwarted in our country in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that as we continue just to pray out the things in the next couple minutes here that are going on, Father, that you hear from, uh, you hear from us, Father, and I thank you that you are listening to our prayers, Father. You hear our prayers and you're going to work on our behalf. And so, Father, we just thank you for that right now. Now, you go ahead and you just continue. Take another minute and you just continue in your own life about what's going on. Father, we just thank you right now for all that you're doing, Father, and we just thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you once again for your word. And Lord, I thank you that your word is becoming first place in our lives. And Father, I thank you that your word guides us and directs us in how to handle all things and how to respond to all situations. And so, Father, we first of all, we pray. Lord, I thank you that that's becoming our MO, that we first of all pray. We first of all attack it in prayer. Father, help us to see when we see things and we want to jump all over it. Help us to see that it's not a physical thing that we're fighting. It's spiritual. And Father, we attack it in a spiritual way. And we take up all the weaponry that you've given us. And we just thank you, Father, for moving mightily. We thank you for just an, a, an incredible outpouring of the presence and the Spirit of God in our church and in our community. Changing lives, changing people, changing destinies for eternity. Father, we thank you once again that we get to be a part of that. Father, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us of our sins, Father. Forgive us for trying to do life on our own. Forgive us for trying to figure out things on our own. Forgive us for allowing our own abilities to take precedence over your ability. Father, we just thank you for your love and your forgiveness. And we thank you for all that you're doing in us, through us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you've, you've heard me say this before, you know, our, our best days are ahead of us. And I still believe that. I know things don't look good. But again, Scripture tells us we're not up against flesh and blood. So we can't be moved by flesh and blood. And I know it's hard. It's hard not to be moved by flesh and blood. But here's the thing. 
if we'll attack it in prayer, if we'll attack it from a spiritual perspective, spiritual has to take care of spiritual, right? Natural cannot take care of spiritual. Spiritual takes care of spiritual. So let's let that be how we handle things, right? We love and we pray. Amen? Amen. Awesome. God's good. Amen? Amen. Well, don't forget next weekend, Father's Day, bring your dads if they're here or bring a dad if you know one that's in the area, again, that doesn't go to church somewhere else and let us just honor them for the day and uh, be a blessing to them. Um, otherwise, have a great week and uh, we'll see you guys next time.